Whenever I write an article, I always make an extensive outline, and that outline revolves me looking at papers, studies, searching Google, looking through our own personal articles, our own personal research to kind of come up with a with an idea or a stance on something. What's interesting is when I started writing this article or planning this article, I started looking at what some of the people who were ranking in Google were saying. And it was always the typical things. You know, they would say a lot of words, but they wouldn't ultimately take a stance on if they should help their ex financially. And there's a lot of reasons for why I think that is the case, but that's not what's going to happen here. So here's my stance. My stance is you don't help an ex financially unless you are together. Your own financial well-being should always come first. Now, there are a few caveats. There are a few exceptions. Exceptions like kids, like if you own a business together, life or death situations. I'm going to talk about those a little bit later. And it's best to look at the overall ground rules of should you help your ex financially, similarly to the no contact rule and the limited no contact rule in that regard. So our stance officially with the no contact rule is, yeah, after a breakup, you should always implement a period of no contact. But there are some situations where that's simply impossible. You know, you're, you have kids, you own a business together, things like that. For situations like that, for those exceptions to the no contact rule, you have to do something called a limited no contact rule. And the same thing kind of applies here to this question of if you should help your ex financially. Our stance is you don't help them unless you are in a relationship together. Your own financial well-being should always come first. But if you're in a situation where you are legally obligated to help them financially, then you have to kind of pull the whole limited no contact idea. There are the exceptions that you have to do it with. But the cool thing is with this article, we're going to talk about how to handle those exceptions and what ground rules you should set up. But first, I think we need to answer the question of why you shouldn't help them unless you are together. So for this one, like I said, I always go through an extensive research process. And for this one specifically, I got help with my wife. I asked her, hey, this is the stance I want to take, but I'm actually having trouble putting into words why I feel this way. And it was her who unlocked the thing for me to basically help me figure it out. And really it revolves around the friend zoning yourself concept. You know, when you buy the milk, why buy the milk when you can get it for free? So any relationship benefit shouldn't be given unless you are actually in a relationship. And helping someone financially is without a doubt a relationship benefit. But I think it's more than just that. It's also opening yourself up to be taken advantage of, you know, and, and here I think one of the best things you can look at is the Benjamin Franklin effect. And we'll quote from the man himself. He that has once done you a kindness will be more ready to do you another than he whom you yourself have obliged. Basically, if you do someone a favor, then you're actually more likely to do them another favor and then another and another. Most people think it's the opposite. They think, well, if I just do my ex this one favor, if I give them this money this one time, it will be a one-time thing. But what research has found is it's the opposite. You helping your ex out financially usually isn't a one-time thing. They usually open that up to take advantage of you. And so then you're paying them again and again and again, and they know they can keep coming to you. They know the well isn't going to dry up, and so they take advantage of you. You see, you want it to be the opposite. You want your ex doing you favors, not the other way around. And this is why I believe that you shouldn't help an ex financially unless you are together. But of course, there are some exceptions. All right, so let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Number one, I am not a lawyer. These are my own opinions based on what I have witnessed in my time coaching individuals that have gone through breakups. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt, but I think the rule that you should abide by here is your own financial well-being should always come first, but I'd like to take a look at the exceptions. All right, so here are kind of the main exceptions for paying an ex financially. Number one, you're legally bound to pay them. Number two, you're living together. Number three, you have to give gifts back. Number four, child support. Five, owning a business. And six, 
life or death situations. Now, let's take a moment and talk a little bit about each one of these so we can kind of understand the scope of them. So let's start with the legally bound to pay them. So this is going to be things like alimony, car payments, cell phone, rent. In this particular case, if you are legally bound to pay them, you kind of have no choice but to help the ex financially or pay them out, help with them financially. It's one of the more common situations that we've seen and we have some radical advice. All right, so if you're living together, our stance is that you need to find a way, if financially possible, to find a new place. But while living together, especially if both of your names are on the lease or on the mortgage, then you are legally bound to pay that mortgage. You are legally bound to pay your half whatever that is. But then there's the the complicated concept of giving gifts back. And this is actually something that my wife brought up. You know, um, she brought up sort of this idea of the engagement ring. And the engagement ring, you know, theoretically, it's a gift, but it's an expensive gift. And legally, you are supposed to give it back. So you keeping it can be construed as you asking for something financially or even theft. What did they steal? in some cases. Though, like I said, the legal waters get a little murky. And then of course we have kind of the easy stuff, child support. If you are required to pay child support, then yeah, you need to pay child support. It's as simple as that. If you, It's one of those legally bound type things that we took out of the legally bound because it's something that we see a lot of. If you own a business together, then yes, legally you need to help that business survive. But the one outlier is life or death situations. Now, immediately people are going to jump to conclusions saying, you know, your ex has maybe this mother who's got cancer, she's in the hospital, um, he can't help pay, you have the money to pay, can you help her out? So it becomes almost an ethical thing. I've not actually seen that happen. The only thing I've seen happen that kind of falls into the life or death situations in my 10 years of heading up ex-boyfriend recovery is pet surgeries. During your time together, you accumulate things. One of those things might be a gift of a pet. You know, your ex might have gotten you a pet or you might have gotten your ex a pet. They loved it. But old Sparky, who we're going to name your pet, unfortunately got sick or hurt and needs a surgery and your ex can't pay for it or at least needs help paying for it. What do you do? Well, I think the the kind of thing I'm going to shout from the rooftops constantly is your own financial well-being comes first. Okay. That's first and foremost. But ethically, I think you kind of look horrible if you let the pet die or don't give the pet help with the pet surgery. So if financially you're able to help out, I would suggest that you do help out for your own sanity and so you're not feeling guilty afterwards. And this leads us to kind of the final thing that I want to talk about, which is setting ground rules for how these payments should go down in the exceptions. So we're going to take a book from our limited no contact concept. You know, like I said, at the very beginning of this article, the no contact rule has its very own version of exceptions and the same rules that apply in that particular situation will apply in this particular situation. So for example, with a limited no contact, you're allowed to be nice to your ex, but you want to keep it short and sweet and keep the main thing, the main thing. So keep it strictly on business. I think the ground rules for how to pay them is the same as the no contact rule. You're there to pay them. You get the payment done. You're not there to talk about the breakup. You're not there to talk about anything else. I think you need to learn to set a boundary as well. It's important that you understand that this is a one-time payment if possible. So if you're in a situation where you just want this to be a one and done thing, make sure you say that ahead of time. And the tricky part with setting boundaries, I think for a lot of people that come through our program is not necessarily saying that they're going to set the boundary. It's keeping the boundary. So, you know, if your ex comes crawling back for more money later on, the people who really have set good boundaries are the people who will say, well, no, I told you last time that this is a one-time thing. And that leads me to the last thing that I want to say, make sure you document the conversation in some way. I want to avoid the, oh no, that's not what you said. Sort of the, he said, she said argument that could happen. Whereas if you have a text message that you sent to your ex and saying, look, I'm going to pay you financially. I'll help you out financially this one time. If you have a text message saying that, then they can't guilt you. You can always bring up the text message and you protect yourself legally because that is what actually happened. So the ground rules for how to pay them, take a page out of the limited no contact playbook. 
Keep the main thing the main thing. Be strictly on business. Make sure you set a boundary if you're in a situation where you are allowed to set a boundary and document the conversation.